All right, folks, it's turn seven. Nothing happened this turn, except I lost all the tax out of Uzid Yasrin. But fortunately, Uzid Yasrin sucks, so that didn't really uh, actually hurt me in any meaningful way. Uh, I am down to two gold after my basic recruitment for this turn, which is sort of hilarious. I'm just going to have to stop recruiting Paul and Kasha pretty soon. But in any case, we're moving down here. Um, Shinoyama actually contacted me and offered to let me have 61, Kawadal Swamp. Let me double check my, my Discord just to confirm that was what he in fact did. Uh, yeah, he did. So what I'm going to do here is uh, recruit a... I can't afford that because I'm recruiting fucking Paul and Kasha. Go away, Paul and Kasha. I'm going to recruit a dude and, like, uh, two heavy infantry and go take that next turn. Uh, we're going to take Iprisia from the Horse Tribe, hopefully. It says 60. I don't think there's actually 60 of them. I'm setting in over 30 units, and a significant number of them actually are Palankasha. I've got 11 Palankasha here. Please do not charge ahead. Just cast spells. Not that you have any spells to cast because we have researched exactly nothing. But next turn we'll get Conjuration level 2, and we have enough Death Gems to summon Ganas twice, so that will be nice. Um, we will fill our gold with... Uh, I guess we'll fill our gold with Palankasha. Because Palankasha can be can be with the same leadership that uh, the Undead are. So with 35 Undead leadership, we can have one Yogini leading, uh, leading a few Palankasha and a bunch of Ganas, and they can do some work. So, we're going to go take Iprisia, uh, nothing else has happened. Uh, this is overall, as I've said before, not a great uh, game so far. Nivaline persists in not organizing any province defense, which is sort of hilarious. Um, like weird flex, but okay. I'll take it. Um, I should also start mixing in some Marcata probably just for the defense, since the Marcata have defense skill 14, even though their morale is shit. If you have a few Marcata and mix them with a a squadron of Palankasha or something, they kind of fill up the square, absorb attacks, and the Palankasha don't get murdered so badly. Um, the downside to it just is Mar Marcata can just cause you to fucking rout for no reason. Um, and it can be very, very frustrating when that happens. In order to use them effectively, you need at least a Bandar commander, preferably a Bandaraja, who gives them plus two morale, which pushes them up to nine. Um, in friendly, in friendly uh, domain, they'll be ten, but then they'll take minus one because they're in skirmish formation, because they're undisciplined, so they get back down to nine. It's rough. It's it's hard. I find it hard to use Marcata. Some people are very successful with them. Uh, in any case, that's the entirety of what's happening this turn. So let's roll right on to turn eight, which should tick as soon as I hit the button here, uh, because apparently I had this all set up last night, and apparently I didn't actually record it or finish it, so whoops me. Anyway, uh, see you next turn. Okay, turn eight. I took Iprisia with only one Bandar Warrior casualty. Great. Uh, Shinoyama has taken this farm. Son of a bitch. Uh, however, he is at least letting me have this, uh, shitty swamp that, uh, nobody really wants, so that's fine. I'll move a commander down to take that. Uh, so we, I am actually technically gonna take two provinces this turn, sort of hilariously. It's turn eight, so at turn nine I'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven provinces, which isn't great. Uh, I'm casting Host of Ghanas twice, spending all of my death gems. That will get me, uh, a pretty good chunk of ethereal chaff, which I will combine with my Palankashas, and a few, uh, a couple of long dead, including this this long dead Bandar warrior, incidentally. This is the only type of long and national long dead that's really good because it has the iron cudgel and so it hits like a truck. Um, these guys are long dead with some armor, but generally bad. And then a lot of times you get like fucking these guys who are worthless. But in any case, we're moving troops over here to take Cormark. Hopefully we'll then be able to push up and take Zox, the double back, get the swamp. And this place, Hobergdorf, which hopefully has Hobergs in it, um, will take our Ethereal Chaff, push up here, and take Saboria. And then from Saboria, we should hopefully be able to get these two provinces as well. Total area, if we accomplish that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 provinces. Uh, not awful, but not good, especially because I still don't have a fort started. Um, I need to have a fort started, like, right now fuck now. So, uh, I'm gonna need to start a fort up here. Uh, I'm gonna need to recruit a commander there. I was recruiting a commander down there, but screw that commander. We're gonna recruit a, a, a guy up there. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not gonna have the resources to do that, because I don't have the income. Because a fort costs 600 for Lanka, if I correct, recall correctly. Yes, 600. So I need to have 600 gold next turn. Uh, which means that actually, I'm gonna have to cancel those Palankashas. I'm probably gonna have to cancel recruitment entirely. Because I'm only going to make 300 and some odd gold 
should be able to squeak it out, but going without recruitment is gonna hurt me, because I'm not sure Ghana's can take- I, uh, I've got to. I've got to recruit some stuff. Got three Palankashas. Um... I have nothing else I can do. Um, that, I mean, that'll give me 40 Ghanas. Well, 40 Ghanas can probably do it, to be honest, since I killed some of the heavy cavalry that was here. 40 Ghanas can probably handle it. Um, oof, this is just a bad scene. It's just a bad scene. I'm going to need him to bless the Palankashas. I could spam out some Bandar. Yeah, I got to. I gotta spam out Bandar. Let's get a bunch of Bandar. We'll have a... Sibergul actually just stay here. Just let those troops go in to take it, I think. 30 units versus Wolf Tribe. Uh, no, that's a bad... It's a bad scene. No, Sibergul, I want you in there for the extra chaff purposes. Okay, yeah, it's just bad. This is just bad overall. This is not a good start. Uh, hopefully I can recover. But we'll just kind of have to see how things go. Definitely need to move back to recruiting Rock to Potas. Um, should hit Blood Magic level 1 in a couple of turns, so as soon as I get my Blood Economy started, I can start pumping out Rakshasas, which will help. Um, but we'll just kind of have to see if we get to that point, to be honest, because having no fort started on turn 8 is bad news bears. Uh, we'll see how it goes. In any case, we're going we're gonna to take Cormark. Pretty sure I can win that one. Uh, we're going to grab that province, which will give me a tiny, tiny extra little scrap of income. Uh, and then we'll try to get, like I said, over here, there, there, try to get that, that, that. If we can manage that, I'll be in tolerable shape, possibly. Um, fortunately, this is Accidental Ascension, so most players are liable to have very shitty expansion. Also, there's still no local province defense in Bergamum. So, I think Niflheim is just gambling on not having to put province defense in his provinces, which is an interesting gamble. Um, I'm not going to do anything about it just yet, because uh, I don't have any troops in position to, like, it's obviously a hostile move, and I don't have any troops in position to do anything about it, so we're just going to keep an eye on that situation. If he has no local defense by the time I get up here, then I'm going to take this province with a scout and then open negotiations from that point. But in any case, that's turn 8 uh, for what it is, and I'll see you all in turn 9. Okay, folks, it's turn 9. We're starting to slowly pull back from the brink. Uh, in Cormark, we took the province with only one casualty. We lost one Atavi infantry. Those Palankashas, man, they really do rip through things if they're uh, properly supported. Um, even here, where they don't have any chaos power, they still hit super, super hard. And against Wolf Tribe, Wolf Tribe get a lot of attacks, but fortunately, they're not super, super high quality, and they are uh, undisciplined and low morale. So if we see here... Uh, yeah, squad morale bonus at Hostile Dominion definitely helped me here. So we went into the battle. And the Palankashas started tearing shit up. Took a little bit of damage, but not a whole lot, especially not compared to their HP. This Palankasha took a lot of hits and actually ended up diseased and feeble-minded. As well as with a chest wound, so he's not very great. But, nevertheless, um, they charged in, tore everybody up. Didn't have much of a problem. As I said, only lost one Atavi. Great. We also took control of Kowadl Swamp as a gesture of friendship and peace from the Bake Mono, our great buddies. I actually, I thought they were here, and I don't see them actually. They might be there, I suppose, since that's a mountain. That could be them. Um, this is a worthless swamp, but it does contain a tiny, tiny bit of income, which is great. So, we're collapsing troops. Also, we got a, a fantastic uh, unexpected event. We got a, a Celebrant event, so a random High Priest and 37 Militia have joined us, which is amazing. We'll just have him spam Sermon of Courage. So, that's 37 uh, low-quality chaff that we didn't have to recruit, which is great. So, we're moving into Lys with uh, actually a significant number of units. This is uh, about 70 units or so. We should be able to wipe out these Woodsman, woodsman Blowpipes pretty easily. I'm hoping, 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 cross your fingers, knock on wood that this is overestimated, and that I'll be able to then split my forces and take both of these provinces in one turn. Simultaneously, I'm moving my two hosts of Ghanas, plus uh, a few Bandar and recruited Palankasha, over here where they're going to try and take Arisia, which is a high-income province. If we can secure that, 
Then we can make this our border here. I don't know why this is green. I think it's because that means there's a road, so it's faster to move. Yeah, I guess there is a road there for some reason. Okay, fine. Uh, and then maybe we can bounce up this way or head out here and take some of these woods. Do something. Maybe we can accomplish something. That's my goal. Um, Next turn, it will be turn 10, and I will not yet have a fortress even building. So I'm way behind when it comes to that. Way incredibly behind. I've got Shaggy just sitting here waiting for his moment, but his moment is going to have to be next turn because I have no money. I'm not recruiting any troops, and I still have no money. And my income next turn is projected to be just slightly over 400. So income next turn, slightly over 478. I think next turn I'm not going to be able to afford a Rock Um, But I must start my, my fort. I, I have to. I don't have another option. Um, if I don't have any forts even started by turn 12, that's bad. Um, if I can have one fort started and then hopefully, ideally, cross your fingers, knock on wood, something good happens, another fort started over here... Then, like, on turn 12, because, like, next turn will be turn 10. That'll be turn 11, I take that. Um, ideally, that will boost my income by something like 150 per turn. And if I can just not recruit troops, I might be able to start another palisade over there on turn 12. So that wouldn't be terrible. It wouldn't be the worst start I've ever heard of. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12? Maybe I can end up with 12 provinces? I don't know, man. I'm reaching. Uh, this is this is a struggle. But hopefully DMX will be waking up soon to guide us out of our misfortunes. Um, and in particular, he has a lot of research points and a lot of magic paths, so he can do stuff. Like, I, I'm, I'm reaching. I really am, because I have done no site searching. I've conquered almost no provinces. Uh, it's been bad. This has been a bad start. But we will overcome. Uh, the monkeys shall rise to power. X gonna give it to you, etc., etc. You know, you know the drill. So, that's the turn. That's turn 9. Uh, the turn's actually going to roll when I kick this again, because I, once again, am the last person. Rip, because I'm uh, awful at games. So, I'll see you all in turn 10. Okay, folks, it's turn 10, and this turn we have bad news and bad news. Uh, first of all, in Is, we actually we have bad news, bad news, and bad news. Um, so, we took this province. This is fine. We lost 12 militia. I don't care. Uh, my undead and demonic troops in Uzid Yasrin are being struck by holy fire. That means there's a site there. I forget what kind of site it is. It's either a holy site or an astral site, um, which attacks the undead and demons. Which is sort of hilarious and terrible because, of course, I am Lanka. All of my good troops are undead and or demons. So, that's great. Um, I cannot afford to recruit a Raktapata this turn because I have to build a palisade. Um, although, to be honest, at this point... At this point, I might... Just hold off on that, because if I have 600 gold, I can recruit another Raktapata, and I can try to hire mercenaries. There's two bands of mercenaries up for hire. Neither of them are super, super impressive. They're both actually ranged units. But uh, missiles would be fine. I'm I'm down with missiles. I'm down with the missiness. The, the, the missileness. Um, especially if I'm going to be going and fighting Wolf Tribe. I'm actually recruiting some Atavi archers this turn. And no troops over here, because once again, out of cash. Um, it is a hard knock life for us, I tell you what. A hard, hard knock life. Just go over there and join this army. So my army is attacking this province. Um, so here are the two bad newses. The other two other bad newses. The first is that this is heavy infantry and heavy cavalry, so it's going to exact some pretty significant casualties, probably. Um... The second is that this is 90 units, so it's actually gone up since last turn. That means the minimum here is about 45 or 50. Uh, about 50, I think. So that means that it requires, like, this whole army would have to go by it, you know, all together in order to take it out. In Laius, these guys are, are worse than uh, than Wolf Tribe, not as in not as powerful. And they still, they still killed a number of my militia with about 42 of them. There could be... 60 or 70 of these guys in here. And here's Niflheim. Niflheim didn't go down through this province. No, they went all the way around. Um, that are now encroaching from a different direction. So, unless I, I declare war on Niflheim and start fighting them immediately, which I suppose I could do, um, I'm going to be limited to like 10 provinces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 potentially, 9, 10. I could still maybe get my 12, but... um. And of those, three are swamps. Uh, it kind of sucks. 
not gonna lie, sort of uh, blows the proverbial chunks. I do, I do sort of pity uh, Gath over here with, I mean, he has, this, she has two farms, but a lot of wastelands, a lot of wastelands. Anyway, um, yeah, really does kind of suck. However, he persists in not placing province defense. I think he might be spending every single dollar expanding and just not have remembered province defense. So, like, I'm thinking... That's interesting. Or he might be banking on the fact that there are these independent provinces over here, and so he's just like, oh, I don't need to put province defense until I see an enemy unit. Which is not true, actually. Um, province defense is mainly useful for warding off certain random events. Like, six province defense is only going to stop, a, like, a scout or something, or one commander from an actual enemy player. But it will... It will turn off certain bad random events is the main reason for it. I don't understand these random little roads. Like, I don't I don't get that. I don't get why they're there. Like, why does this mountain have three roads going to it? Why does there this one little stretch of road that doesn't go over to where Lanka is? What What is this? And this. It, it's just funny. It, it just fucks with the, uh, the numbers for no real apparent reason. In any case. Uh, yeah. So this turn... I'm gonna start the- I'm gonna start the fort. I got to. I need- I desperately need forts. Um, I'm gonna start the palisade there. We're recruiting pretty much nothing. Uh, that gave us 43 more gold, so I guess I'll pump out more Atavi archers to help shoot these wolf tribe. Wolf tribe are quite archer vulnerable, so we'll pop up there. Uh, we can't cross any of these because these are cold and in Niflheim's dominion. And then the army will come back down here, probably, and we'll get some Atavi archers, and we'll help use them to help attack the wolf tribe. Take that province. Um, and we'll try to get a fort started here as well, so we can kind of, like, play catch-up a little bit, because we are definitely going to be playing catch-up here. Um, I, I mean, I, it's accidental ascension. I would not be surprised if other people have had expansion this shitty. And given that it is accidental ascension, having shitty expansion isn't as disastrous as it would normally be. But it's still bad. It's still not a good thing. So we'll see how it goes. We'll just, uh, we'll just work on it. In any case, um, it's turn 10. DMX should be coming out in the next couple of turns, hopefully. And I'll see you in turn 11. Okay, it's turn 11. On the plus side, we took Hobergdorf with almost no casualties that matter. Couple of Atavi, five, three militia, whatever, who cares. The lance catchers served their purpose, they caught all the lances. However, however, this is actually Utgard, first of all, I fucked up last turn. This is not Nafelheim, this is Utgard. It's a different, it's a similar banner, but a different banner. But they moved in and took Arisia, the province that I was moving into, and they actually have a pretty powerful force. Um, a force of Jotun Javelinists. Now, this force by itself would probably have beaten me, but would have taken quite heavy casualties. They also, however, have their profit, because, of course, they profitized their first commander. So, their profit can, of course, banish. And Ghanas are undead. So, yeah. It did not go well. Um, notice all the Javelins are being wasted on the Ghanas. That's perfect. That's fine. Um... And then, but the Ghanas get banished as they attack. Um, and like, despite high MR, the banishment is actually, and the, the holy strikes are actually quite effective. So, you know, like this fight over here is actually going fine until the banishment wrecks the Ghanas. Uh, meanwhile, the Bandar warriors are standing back here throwing their rocks, which is okay. Um, one of them gets turned to stone, and then the Jotun Javelin is just outnumbering me and outstat me by so much that they clean up. Bandar Warriors are one-on-one, -on -one, not a match for Jotun Javelinists. Of course, Jotun Javelinists are a lot more expensive. In terms of efficiency, they pretty much are, but especially not when their experience start up to two levels. Jotun Javelinists are... Yeah. Probably the best Jotun unit. So, my army gets wiped. Completely wiped. Um, causing a total of five casualties. It's a problem. Now, here's the special problem. Also, I'm about to be attacked in Lanka by knights, uh, who will absolutely mop up my province defense, and there's nothing really I can do about it. So that's good. Um, 
yeah, a quote-unquote large-scale attack will just blend through these guys. I don't have troops here to stop that. I mean, I have random animals, but random animals won't stop knights. I have a couple of Bandar warriors. I have one undead Bandar with a club. He might be able to stop a knight, but... Like, it's not even actually worth risking my mages patrolling. So we're just going to move back here. Um, we are moving out my Roxapata in order to start blood hunting because I must start blood hunting. Like, desperately. I have to do it. Um, I need to be summoning units now. Immediately. Um, I've contact- Utgard contacted me offering me a non-aggression pact 3. I didn't take it right off the bat. Because, basically, I said, look, you're really close to my capital. I need this province. Um... I'm, I'm happy to be peaceful and etc, but I gotta have some space, so we'll see if he goes for it. I don't know if he's going to in his position. My response to this would probably depend on what my scouts say, because if he has a scout in Lanka, he probably sees that I have like no troops down here, in which case the strong temptation probably is to say, nah, we're going to war and just charge in. Especially because he also pro doubtless sees that I haven't taken those provinces, which is definitely a bad sign in terms of how my expansion has gone. If he doesn't have scouts in my territory, he might be more cautious. He might be willing to take the deal, and we can make a non-aggression pact and be happy. Um, I don't know if he's going to. And as bad as my start has been, I don't know if I can live if he decides to attack me. Especially because he's Utgard, right? Okay, as soon as Utgard hits Enchantment 5, I'm fucked. Because at Enchantment 5, they will have... Where is he? The real Snick? At Enchantment 5, they'll be able to set up Sith Kona communions that can spam out skeletons endlessly, and I don't have any endless skeleton encounters online yet. And I probably won't at that point, uh, because Sith Kona also have 11 research points each. And so, well, now, I, I, I do have one thing going for me, which is that Utgard has a Drain Dominion, if I recall correctly. So his research actually won't be great. It's better than mine, I fucking guarantee, but it won't be amazing. Like, it probably, probably his research is only right now like 75 or 80 points per month. Once DMX wakes up, I'll have a little bit more power and a lot more options. But um, right now, I'm I'm in a, a precarious state. A state in which I might be tempted to actually accept the offer of a non-aggression pact. Except it would genuinely put me in a terrible position for him to have both these provinces and me to have neither of them. Like, it would be, like, actually awful. Um... I'm doing something dangerous here. I'm gambling because I feel like I have to gamble at this point. I am actually splitting this army. So this is a throne. It only has 30 units. I am gambling that this is a level 1 throne. We have a bunch of level 1 thrones. Level 1 thrones are often very poorly defended. So if this is a level 1 throne, which I'm gambling that it is, this force should be able to take it. Um, I've got all of my Palankasha, a bunch of Bandar, and then I've also got my Militia to serve as Chaff. And so I'm just betting... I'm just betting that my Bandar and Palankasha will be able to sweep through and take the place. Um, I'm actually going to split them up into two squads. We're going to have the Bandar here go fire. You guys can attack, and then the Palankasha will sweep in behind. Okay, that'll be fine. Uh, meanwhile, Aradana is taking a bunch of these troops down here in an effort to either set up to fight the Wolf Tribe or help reinforce home. I'm still recruiting Atavi archers. If I wanted just patrollers, I would be recruiting Marcata probably, but I need uh, archers as well. Like, archers will be super, super important to fighting the wolf tribe. So I'm spamming out Atavi archers over here so that I can take this province relatively easily. Zox. Um, also, Hobergdorf has decent income and is overall a pretty okay province. It doesn't have any resources, but it has decent income and is, by f is far from the worst that it could have been. Um, I'll try to take Yellow Mountains and put a fort there. Uh, if this attack fails, I'm probably just fucked, but we'll see. We'll see if I can make it. Uh, and of course, I don't really have to worry about these, because that's Niflheim with Cold Dominion, so those will probably never be passable to me. Um, now, Giants with Snow Move can still move through them, so I do still have to defend that area, but I don't have to think about these connections as connections that I can use. He still hasn't, Niflheim still has not put any province defense in Bergamum. But he's moved some units here, so I think he might be going to take Saboria. Um, which would be bad, because once again, I need that. Because right now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 provinces on turn 11. 
I'm hoping I can get that and that 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 maybe? If I can manage to persuade Utgard to give me that. Um, that'd be fantastic. If he won't give me that, then I'll take Titan's Breath Peaks. It's a, it's a much worse province, but I'll take it. Um, <sighs> yeah, it's a bad scene overall. But this is not a uh, not a fantastic place to be in terms of how everything is going. But we will soldier on. DMX it will triumph no matter what. Um, spending all my money pumping out troops and another rock topada. I can't be saving up for a second for it right now. I just don't have that option. So we'll see how it goes. In any case, uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in turn 12 where hopefully we are not invaded by a horde of unstoppable giants. Hopefully. Cross your fingers. Knock on wood. Uh, sacrifice a chicken to DMX. And we'll see how it goes. See you next time. All right, folks. Uh, <clears throat> this is what I would call another bad turn, to be honest. Uh, we are under attack by uh, by good old Utgard. They decided apparently that I was the target, which is fair, uh, given what they can probably see. So, got pushed in there. That's fine. Yellow Mountains. We actually took Yellow Mountains, lost most of our militia, but only one Palankasha. So that's fine. We've taken that, uh, that throne there. Uh, however... We were, of course, attacked by knights in Lanka, as I was afraid we would be, and we got attacked by almost the worst possible amount of knights. Now, when this event fires, uh, the amount of knights that... It, it rolls 4d6 to determine how many knights will attack you, and I think 4d6 or 5d6 militia, so it rolled 20 knights. Yeah, um... Knights are bad. Knights are very hard to kill, especially when your province defense is primarily fucking Marcada. Anyway, yeah, I'm salty. Why do you Why do you ask? So, uh, fun fact, this event normally cannot happen to Lanka. Um, Lanka is in the early era. This event can only happen in the middle era. So, uh, yeah, we got absolutely fucking rolled. Uh, the knights just, just trampled right through the province defense. I'm not sure I got a kill. Uh, I killed three militia and zero knights. So, yeah. Uh, Lanka's province defense is bad, so we are under siege in Lanka, which also means we can draw no income because that's our only fort, because this palisade still has two turns to go. And we've, of course, lost that province, which also cuts off the income from Kowadal Swamp. Uh, so, yeah, we can't uh, we can't draw any income, we can't really do anything. We have the Throne of Autumn, Mages of Autumn would be really cool, but uh, I can't recruit them because I can't build anything because I can't... You, you get the point. I'm fucked. Uh, this is the end of the playthrough, but we're gonna soldier on, we're gonna fight a little bit, we're gonna see if we can't at least give Utgard a bloody nose, make them pay for it a little bit. Um, we are recruiting nothing because we're spending all of our gold trying to get Gifri's Swordsman, which is 30 mercenary swordsmen. That would turn the tide for us, at least temporarily. Let us push back against Utgard a little bit, uh, because his giant troops are not very good at fighting size 2 troops since they only get one per square and size two troops get three per square. You know what I mean. Uh, we can't recruit anything. We are casting Host of Ghanas one more time. It won't help all that much because this army is led by his Prophet, but it will help some in breaking free of the uh, the fort here. We're prophetizing our own Rock Tapata so that he can cast his uh, Holy Spell, and we are hoping and praying for DMX to come and help save us. Uh, like I said, this guy should be safe for now because he can finish the Palisade and they can't get to him before it finishes. Uh, we're gathering our troops up, so we have some Atavi archers, we've got some Bandar down here that are coming down, uh, we've got some Bandar inside, so we will be able to break siege next turn. Hopefully, if we have the mercenaries, I think we will actually be able to defeat these knights, but uh, we're, we'll be so cripplingly behind at that point that it will be uh, a huge, huge problem. Uh, these Jotun skin shifters are definitely coming for our ass as well, so there is that. Uh, I'm going to have to do some hard diplomacy to try to rally up some support against Utgard. We'll see what we can do. Um, I don't hold out great hopes. Possibly I can get Shinoyama to come in on my side. Possibly I can get Niflheim to come in on my side. Um, especially because Niflheim and Utgard actually compete for national heroes. So, and so maybe I can convince him that Utgard is his natural enemy? I don't know. I don't fucking... I'm doomed. I mean, that's what it is. But we're not going to go down without a fight. We are going to, uh... We're going to continue the... Oh, my... Oh, okay. I clicked on the wrong province. I thought I clicked on this one, and I was like, A Kraken? How did he even take a Kraken? Uh, so, yeah. That's the turn. Uh, very brief, because we're doomed. But, you know, we will uh, we'll soldier on. We're working up towards Blood Magic level 3, stubbornly. Uh, stubbornly in the uh, 
the, the delusion that we will actually get to use that. Uh, I also need to send, I have air gems and I made an agreement with Nazca to sell them air gems in exchange for uh, blood and death gems. Uh, normally, of course, I would never do this, but, 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 I really have nothing else. I have no, no other, uh, no other possible way of surviving. So, we're going to send them, what was the deal here? It was eight air gems. We're going to send them eight air gems. They'll send us a few death and a few blood slaves. And we'll see if we can do something with them. Probably not, but it's worth trying. Make sure my recording is still functioning properly. Yes, it is. Good. Okay, so, yeah. We'll see what we can do. Um, if we can break out of this, then possibly we can manage to hang on into the mid-game as a minor power. I mean, stranger things have happened. Um, and if we can gather some troops and push back and take those two provinces, then I'll be super happy to make peace. If we can push back and take just that province, I'll be happy to make peace. Um, I don't know where Utgard... I don't remember exactly where Utgard's capital is. I think it's, like, here. Possibly here. I think it's here. Um, so... You know, we'll uh, we'll do what we can, and we'll see how it goes. I'll see you all in turn 13.